Welcome back to Let's Code, I'm Chris Biscardi, and today we're gonna to talk about moving the 2D platformer example that we've been working on from the high-level Heron library to Bevy Rapier. Now, this isn't a fundamental change of physics library. On the right-hand side, we have Rapier and the official higher-level integration with Bevy, that's called Bevy Rapier. And then on the left, we have Heron, which is sort of an unofficial higher-level layer over Rapier. So we're not changing physics libraries here, um, which means that there isn't gonna actually be that much of a change. I just wanted to show off why I chose uh, to move to Bevy Rapier instead of Heron and what that change actually ended up looking like in practice. So a brief overview, um, Heron is supposed to be a higher level library that abstracts over um, Bevy 2D and, or Bevy Rapier 2D and 3D with kind of the same API. And it's supposed to be higher level. Um, it makes a couple changes that we'll go over that uh, I don't necessarily agree with. And it also um, does these changes with the intention of making it easier to make games specifically. Now, be now Rapier itself is uh, meant for both simulations and games. So we could use Rapier as a physics library for some of our say nano based um creative coding examples some of our shader work uh we could bounce around some spheres and put shaders on them and have them collide and things like that but also rapier is meant for building games both 2d and 3d it's a general uh the the underlying rapier library is a general physics uh library or general physics crate whereas heron is meant specifically to make it easier to make games on top of that library so there are, there are a couple um, things that are nice in Heron. Specifically, one of the things that I thought I would really like is there's a, this collisions uh, type. This collisions type is kind of nice. I think it's only in Heron. And it is a uh, component which you can add to your player or whatnot. And it will be filled with a list of entities that the current entity, like the player, is colliding with or not. This is really nice because you don't have to do this bookkeeping yourself but it's not actually that useful in practice, I noticed. Um, I, we weren't able to get it to be used in the 2D platformer example for Bevy ECS LDTK. We did go with manual event tracking in that case because there were entities that we wanted to filter out and things like that. Um, now, it's possible that we could have gotten this to be used, but we just didn't find a way to have it. And honestly, we could do this ourselves. Like this, this specific piece isn't that much code. So the big issue for me though, is the code that I wanted to write um, is when I started working on the jump for our character. Now jumps in 2D platformers are super important. Like the, the controls and the movement are basically what make or break the game. Right. Like if you if you have a nice floaty jump, something a little bit more like Super Meat Boy, for example, then it's easy to make it feel too floaty. Right. You kind of need that Super Meat Boy, like slippy, slidey uh, feel to the game. But basically all 2D platformers like um, like Celeste and Mario and other games like that have this effect where when you jump, the second half of your jump or after you release the space bar, the gravity increases and the gravity increases to something like three X what it used to be. Now, the gravity or the um, the gravity force after I've switched from Heron to Bevy Rapier isn't quite calibrated correctly yet. So you can see here that I'm setting the scale to something like 30, which is kind of ridiculous. But you'll also see that the jump is a little bit uh, too floaty. Now, the code that I wanted to write to do this in Heron was either one of these uh, set the gravity kind of pieces or uh, accessing the underlying bevy rapier gravity scale functions. And I couldn't get either of these to work correctly. So the approach that I was going with was basically just setting the downward velocity, which ended in this like really, really abrupt. You would start jumping and then it would cut off and you immediately drop which isn't what, it, it's not what I wanted, right? It, it, I want a smooth transition from going up to going down. So let me show this a little bit. Now it's gonna look a little bit weird. So we've got our little uh, dude here, our little little zombie player. Um, these orange boxes are the debug uh, collision boxes for Bevy Rapier. So you can see that they're not quite lined up with the level in the top right. 
This is one of the changes that I'm not quite done with yet, but this is a really easy fix. Um, the way that the Bevy coordinate system works is that zero zero is at the center of the screen and Bevy ECS LDTK uh, sets the center of the tile set at the bottom left. So it's just gonna be an offset for all these colliders uh, to put them in the right position. But the jump uh, is the slow upward velocity with this nice little gravity increase. So you can see that it doesn't quite uh, throw you down immediately, but you still get this nice little arc that continues after the jump actually uh, ends. And I only have it um, setting the velocity or setting the gravity scale if you're still on the way up right now, just as a test. So if I hold this on too long and I start falling on the normal jump, you'll see it, it doesn't actually apply. Um, but you can hold space now and sort of land where you intend to land, which is kind of the point of the uh, gravity scale based jump. It, it's, it's meant to give you more control over the character. So I wasn't able to do this inherent. There's another uh, example in a different uh, game that I'm writing, a block breaker game, where I needed to access the underlying rapier resources to enable continuous collision detection for the ball, uh, which I couldn't do in Heron either. Heron does say that it is supposed to support accessing like the underlying uh, bevy types. So hide the actual physics engine. This is an implementation detail the user shouldn't have to worry about, but allow advanced users to access the underlying rapier resources. So the user is never blocked by a missing API or missing element in the API of Heron. Now I've found that this is actually not really true. Um, and it may become true in the future, who knows, but I wasn't actually able to access the underlying physics engine. And I don't think that I want the physics engine to actually be abstracted away. I think that that is a choice that I disagree with in the crate design of Heron. So it's not so much that Heron is bad. It's just something that I don't agree with in the same way that I don't really agree with abstracting over, say, your SQL databases, right? I think that if you use the least common denominator API for your uh, SQL database, then you're not really taking advantage of the SQL database that you've chosen, right? You're not using Postgres features uh, or MySQL features, right? You're not taking advantage of the, the thing that you've chosen as the underlying implementation. You're using this lowest common denominator implementation of APIs, which doesn't give you all of the power that you could otherwise have. So I think a physics library isn't something that I'm going to be switching out very often for a game, right? It's like, if I'm going to switch out the physics library, that's a major, major decision. It's not something that I need a checkbox for. So I don't need that abstracted in my game. So that's why. Uh, let's go over the how. So this is the, um, well, not a PR because I didn't make a PR. I just pushed to main branch. This is the PR that makes all the changes. Uh, you can see that I've removed Heron. This was version 3.0. I know there's a 4.0 beta or alpha that is currently released. Um, it was released like a couple days ago, but I chose not to upgrade. I instead chose to go with the official Bapier, <laughs> the official Bevy Rapier 2D uh, at 0 0.15. So Bevy Rapier 2D does have a prelude. This is very similar to the way that Heron has a prelude. Uh, preludes are basically just a collection of items that the author of the crates think that you'll want to use. Um, I had to remove the bug from this collider bundle. Um, a couple of the patterns that I'm using were based on the idea that you can use more of these components uh, in Bevy Rapier. The collider component doesn't have a debug implementation, so I can either take the collider out of here. I can write a custom debug implementation, which I didn't feel like doing, or I could remove debug. So I removed debug. It's not a big deal for me, um, but if I ever want it back, I can just write a custom implementation that calls out to each of the fields in turn instead of uh, using the collider. So we went from collision shape to collider, uh, and you'll see a, a couple of naming changes like this. Like one of them is collider and one is collision shape, or this is rotation constraints, and instead it's locked axes in the underlying library. Physic material is a combination of a couple things, friction and restitution and mass properties being the uh, operative ones. So we do have to add these uh, components ourselves, which is not a big deal. Uh, I think the physics material is okay as an abstraction, but it's not really super useful. Like I don't really need, I guess, to have the ease of access to set all of these at once. <laughs> so you can see that the rotation constraints dot lock and lo locked axes rotation locked are the are the same thing effectively, just renamed. 
And that's a common theme throughout some of these uh, Heron APIs. So our collision shape here for the player on the left is a cuboid, which I'm going to change to a capsule, by the way. Um, but in on the right, it's just a cuboid with uh, the two half extents. And on the left hand side, it's half extents with a VEC3, which is an interesting choice uh, because in a 2D game, we don't ever deal with the Z axis. So it's always going to be zero. So we're left with kind of the debt of supporting 2D and 3D in the same library with Heron. Um, and then there's this border radius, which I never used. So not really a problem for me. Same thing again, collider. And then we swap out the physics material. You can see on the left here that we've got like a friction, a, a density, and like a default restitution. On the right, we have a little bit more control over the friction and how it works. So on the left-hand side, it feels like we're setting the amount of friction. And on the right-hand side, it's pretty clear that we're setting the coefficient for this surface and how it combines with uh, the coefficient of the colliding surface. Restitution is kind of how bouncy something is, and we do the same thing once again. We set a coefficient for the surface and then a combine rule for how it combines with other values. Um, and then mass properties again, uh, we just set the density and that's that's that. So I don't know that the, the physics material abstraction here is really worth it. Uh, we do have to like ch choose this combine rule, but that doesn't feel like a lot of overhead. That feels like something I'm going to be copy pasting out of an example mostly anyway. Again, we've got the locked axes for the rotation constraints. And then we get to the really interesting piece. The gravity scale is something that we did have to add because we are going to change it on the player. We only have to add it to the player because that's the only place that we're going to change it. We removed a debug on a couple of things that had collider bundles. Uh, and then we went from some of the Heron imports to the Rapier 2D imports. This is another one of those renames where on the Rapier side in the underlying library, it's linvel, which is linear velocity. And on the left-hand side, it's linear in Heron. So not a big deal there either. Now, the way we set it up is different, but not substantially so. We can set the Rapier Physics plugin with some user data. It's a little bit more of a complicated uh, line here. You know, like we have to specify a type argument uh, to set the pixels per meter for the physics interactions. And then I also set up the debug render plugin, which is kind of uh, more or less built into Heron by default. Basically, all Heron does under in the underlying code for the debug plugin is if you set debug, then it adds the plugin. If you don't set debug, then it doesn't add the plugin. So it's not like it's not some magical fancy thing. It's just kind of something that we can write ourselves with a single if statement. And then we don't have to explicitly set the gravity here either. Uh, you can see I disabled the camera fit inside the level. That is uh, due to the fact that the colliders for the walls and stuff aren't in the right position currently. So I set the camera scale to something that could zoom out a little bit and show me uh, more of the scene. I'll switch that back in. And this is where I set the camera scale. So if you ever need to kind of like zoom out a camera uh, to try to figure out where you placed something on a screen, uh, the orthographic camera bundle for the 2D camera has an orthographic projection with a scale number on it. And this just makes it so that you see two times more stuff on the screen. Now we're getting to the area where I was failing to set the gravity in uh, the movement code with Heron. So the Heron side never worked. Um, and the right hand side, we were able to remove one of the arguments to so the gravity and we set the gravity scale in the query. So this is a query right here for uh, the player entity. You can see with player here and some other things like ground detection. Um, and then we set the gravity scale as mutable and we can set the gravity scale to whatever we want, whenever we want, which is wonderful. Uh, that's exactly the functionality that I wanted to achieve with this port. So no, uh, no arguments there. Um, there is this like, kind of like pause physics during load uh, system that takes advantage of this phys physics time abstraction in Heron. I don't find this particularly uh, important, but you know, maybe that maybe maybe that's deal breaking for you. I don't know. Again, a bunch of renames. Um, a lot of this was renames and just finding what the names were and what the components were between the two. I don't find the renames to be particularly helpful. Uh, for example, like this abstraction over the 2D and 3D inherent, um, I was able to reduce to just a VEC2 instead of a VEC3 with a zero argument. I think that semantically using the VEC2s for a 2D game makes a lot more sense. And I don't like having to set the Z index to, or like the Z value to zero. This is probably one of the more substantial changes. Um, the collision shape that we were using before is an abstraction around a number of shapes. The collider is not 
as much of a defined abstraction. So the collision shapes in Heron are something like cuboid and capsule and things like that. But the collider in Bevy Rapier is uh, like a dyne field uh, on the struct. So to access it in Heron, it's like if the the shape is a collision shape cuboid, we can pull out the half extents, which is the size of the cube. It defines the size of the cube anyway. Um, and on the right-hand side, we have to go to the underlying raw um, sort of collider shape and then treat it as a cuboid. And this returns a sum type so or an optional type. So we're getting the same thing effectively here. It's just that you have to uh, make a couple more field accesses or requests. And then the code itself is the same, except we've removed the border radius and the extra Z index. This is another one of those renames where uh, you have like a half extends on the left hand side and half extents on the bevy rapier side i don't love these renames these renames don't feel particularly useful i don't think half extends is any better than half extents but you know uh maybe it helps somebody and then uh one of the things again in the heron side of things is that there are uh there's a rigid body rename and the addition of sensor so sensor in bevy rapier is not a rigid body uh, field. It's like a checkbox on a collider. So we can insert or remove that component as we wish. Whereas in Heron, we have to change the type of the rigid body from and to uh, sensor or dynamic or whatnot. Now in Bevy Rapier, the underlying library, um, there is a rigid body uh, fixed, which is for like walls and stuff, you know, stuff that shouldn't move. But again, uh, Heron changes the name of that from fixed to static which may or may not be a better name, but I kind of like the idea of matching the underlying library a little bit more there. Fixed and static don't feel that different to me. Um, of course, because we don't have the abstraction, the collision shape abstraction over these things, uh, when we listen to the collision events, we don't have to deal with it. So we can just get the value of B um, instead of calling a function to get the rigid body entity and then using it. If we want the sensor information here, we also have to query for the sensor information or find it through the data. So there's a little bit more work we have to do if we want that to stick around. But overall, this was a fairly trivial kind of refactoring. I guess I wasn't using maybe some of the deeper uh, API abstractions in Heron, but I really, I don't know. I don't think that I'll be using Heron moving forward. I think the Bevy Rapier is better for me and the types of games and the things that I wanna do um, with Bevy. And it's also nice that the Bevy Rapier plugin is uh, official, right? It's nice that this is going to be a thing that I don't have to like worry about getting features because it is officially maintained by Dimforge in uh, coordination with the underlying Rapier physics library. And I have access to everything that I could ever want access to. Nothing is being hidden from me. I have sort of the full complexity for better or worse of Rapier itself. So hope that was useful. I hope that was useful in maybe like making a decision between Heron and Rapier um, because I think that I would have preferred to start with Rapier 2D for this project, uh, but also the refactoring wasn't that bad. I think that the the big note here again is that the access to the underlying Rapier uh, elements, so like gravity scale, if you need them, are not available to you in Heron, not really. Um, I think there are ways to make it work, but the ways to make it work are kind of overly complicated and you have to jump through some hoops. So if you think that you're going to need things that Heron doesn't provide, then Bevy Rapier is going to be the right choice for you. If uh, you think that you can fit inside of kind of the Heron worldview for how you should make a game and what you should access, then maybe that's going to be good for you as well. Hopefully this helps. Um, we're going to be using Bevy Rapier 2D as soon as I fix up the rest of this refactor. And I will catch you next time.